Hello everyone and welcome to the tutorial again. In this one, we are going to take a look at how you can change and use different configuration options for your simulation. So you will have the flexibility to change your configuration and then use them to evaluate different workloads. So for this particular example, uh, we are going to take a look at three different configurations. The first two examples are using PCI 3 and PCI V4. So this will be a multi-GPU simulation and we'll take a look at how the performance will change when using one generation versus the other. Uh, ideally from what we expect, PCI V4 should be more performant. And then with the small GPU experiment, all we are going to do is just change the number of uh, compute units on the GPU and see how the performance is. So with that, let's take a look at the different examples. First, if we go to PCI 3, the change occurs in the file uh, r9nano.go. So here I'm just using vim to open this file. And if we go to where the connection is created, so create connection in the r9nano platform builder is actually responsible for creating the PCI connector. So here we can see that we have defined version three to be used. And uh, so that's the version that will be used in this comparison. So once you make that change or if you want to, you can also change other parameters like switch latencies if you want. Now let's compile this application and see how it performs. All right, PCI three timing dash dash GPUs one two three four length equals to four zero nine six zero. And let it run for some time. Okay, so that's the performance we get when using PCIe v3. Now let us try that more advanced version with PCIe 4. So based again on the configuration, we open our file r9nano.go. We go to the function create connection. Yep, so here in create connection, we have the create network function. And here, instead of version three, we have built with version four. So this is uh, uh, PCI v4 and ideally it should be performing more, but let's see how it goes. So again, we compile the application. We use the same input parameters and see how the performance works. So one thing to note here is that ideally, if you wanted to, you can change the same r9nano.go file in PCI 3 and just change with version 4. The reason I have done it in two separate folders is, uh, one, it helps with uh, experimentation. Like you can organize your experiments better. You can have uh, separate configuration files in each of these experiments and then run them accordingly. So it's easier to manage. For example, you know, if you are running different workloads over time and then you want to change the configuration, so you can just maintain a separate folders for them instead of going back and changing the same configuration again and again. This also ties up to the fact that uh, we don't usually advocate for uh, having a lot of command line options. So since we advocate the uh, use of configuration files, so this is a way to go. However, you are, uh, it's easily possible that you can just change the r9nano.go file here instead of creating a separate folder to do this. So let's take a look at the performance numbers again. If you compare here and this one, it's quite evident that using uh, PCI v4 gives a better performance. So this matches what we have heard about PCI 4 since it's the newer version and is likely to improve performance. And therefore, its use in multi-GPU systems is becoming very popular. Now let's take a look at the smaller GPU example. So again, the reason I've created separate folders is because it helps to maintain these configuration files uh, separately without having to change them again and again. So again, we open the r9nano.go. So here we have the function 
So create GPU builder. So this is which uh, creates the GPU builder and defines it. So there are parameters here, num compute units per shader array. So typically in a GCN3 GPU, there would be four compute units per shader array. So that's uh, something that's uniform across the GCN3 architecture. However, the number of shader arrays would uh, vary. Like for example, the high-end or uh, high-end GPUs which would be used in the servers would have more shader arrays, whereas the low-end GPUs which would be used in mobile phones and APUs would have lower shader array. So here we have only four shader arrays. So this results in a total of four cross four, that's 16 compute units. A traditional GPU or the R9 Nano that we have by default has 64 compute units. So that's uh, definitely larger. So we'll see how the performance scales when using a smaller GPU versus a larger GPU. So again, let us compile the application. All right. Um, now, since there are 160 work groups, all of them would be running on one GPU since we just have not specified any dash GPUs flag. So by default, one GPU will be used. So let us wait and see how the performance comes. Okay, so it seems to be slower than the uh, larger GPU. Uh, I mean, if you remember the results from our previous experiments, however, we'll run it again just to show how the performance changes. So let us go back again. We can go back to any of these PCIs since it's only a single GPU. So there's not any inter GPU communication happening. So this by default has the 64 CU configuration in this R9 nano.go file. So again, you can see big difference. So here it's 0 0.000261, here it's 0 0.000200. So again, using a larger GPU helps because you have sufficient work groups to saturate the entire GPU. And then since the smaller GPU only has 16 compute units, it's not uh, the other work groups have to wait before the before they can be scheduled since there's only a limited resource available. So with these experiments, what we're trying to show again is you know how you can change this configuration easily. You can easily add your own configuration files, uh, easily add your own configuration options as well. You can even add them to the command line, though we usually advise against it because the more things you add to the command line arguments, the larger it grows. So it's easier just to maintain uh, separate configuration files, which is something we advocate for. And the reason uh, configuration files also make sense to use here is that the compilation of the simulator itself is very fast, as you observe. So if you make a change and just run go build, it just takes a few seconds to compile the entire uh, simulator. So compilation is not really a bottleneck here. So it's not, it's not something to be worried about. Normally we put options in command lines instead of files because uh, we have to recompile again and again if we change something in the file. However, because the compilation process is faster here, so we didn't worry. So that's something we uh, definitely kept in mind when designing the simulator. So with that, I'd like to uh, come to the end of this tutorial for MGPU Sim. In the next few tutorials, Ifan will talk to you about MGPU Sim and general principles of Go. And so thank you for attending the talk and I hope uh, I was able to teach you the basics of MGPU SIM. As usual, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to shoot us an email or alternatively, if you notice any bug on MGPU SIM, uh, please, please feel free to file a bug online uh, or open an issue in our GitLab. We are always happy to collaborate in the project. And uh, as we try to extend the project, uh, scope of the project with more architectures such as CPUs, Navi GPUs and other accelerators. So thank you.